You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. That was gnarly from, that was near Jackson. Was that, that wasn't you, was it? No, that was. It was you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. I knew, I, I knew, I, I was trying to like, I didn't watch it, but I had seen something of yours and I hadn't remembered yeah. what it was. I've seen so many damn movies this fall. You, yeah, your mind's really full, dude. No, no, but I remember watching that. Uh, we played it uh, on one of the matinees and uh, it was one of the ones I actually sat and watched because I wanted to make sure I watched that one. And yeah. It was, yeah, that was intense man you get, yeah. captured the the vibe really really well yeah what definitely. happened there talk about that yeah definitely so walk us through like the yeah so we had just gotten so we once again it was like february we like just starting to get like the film season rolling here we had like a really atrocious avi season early year and kind of persistent all throughout the entire year so we had been really skittish and going out in the backcountry and we also had like a low snowpack at first so we just hadn't quite gotten that many shots yet and then we were over towards jackson i think it was early February maybe it was just after it was definitely early February and they had like a six snowpack way more snow than we had had and then we started following some local guys out in the backcountry but hadn't been in that snowpack for like much of the season and they also had some persistent weak layers that were definitely noted but we hadn't uh, seen triggered anywhere Mm -hmm. unfortunately we actually that wasn't a full persistent weak layer that we set off there but there was a recent storm and then we followed some guys into the backcountry that we're locals and knew what they were doing and definitely had skied that zone a lot, but probably a red flag was just following kind of somebody, following someone <clears throat> in the back country that it's a lesson you don't want to have to learn the wrong way. Yeah, right? definitely. And we kind of trusted them with their local knowledge and having been out there before. Did but you dig pits or anything? Yeah. Like we always dig pits and try to like assess the avid danger in the back country, but just following someone that we feel comfortable with and maybe making a few calls that we probably shouldn't have. We drop into this face and then we all had even said like, like we always have safe zones. That's the nice part about filming with like a crew. Like get that. eyes on you. We got eyes on us from like six different angles. Isaac was at the top, and then we have like a filmer dude on the side. Everyone's like ready in case something does go wrong. But in this case, definitely like absolute worst case scenario besides getting buried happened. So we skied this whole face. There was a little bit like more southerly aspect that was kind of getting heated up by the sun all sun, all, all day, and skied right on the edge of it most of the way down. And then I was like, all right. Nothing sled yet. Let's head out for this backflip towards the bottom. And there was a uh, like propagation that I hadn't ever seen before where I was all the way at the bottom of the slope and it had just like cracked like all the way back at the top of the mountain. And I didn't see any of it until I was taking off and I was like mid flip and all of a sudden I saw some like snow moving. You were like, upside down and I was looked and was like, oh no. Until like hadn't any clue. Like, cause at first you can see from the video, like, oh, why didn't he see that? Like there's an avalanche behind him. Mm-hmm. But I was so focused on this like next takeoff I was about to do mm-hmm. that had no idea until I was mid flip. Did you land like right in front of it? If I remember. Yeah, I landed like right in front of it, but like mid air had like, cause that day too, like with some of the recent snow, the snow was a little punchy mm. and like mid flip, I realized that is sliding and there had been a couple punch fronts throughout that. I was like, Oh my God, you cannot punch front on this. You got to come on to the bolts. Get so like come on bolts it, landing but then also gear. like went back seat a little bit just to make sure I didn't like go over the front. Yeah. So stomped it though. And then was able to ski out of it and just like look back up and like this whole mountain is just like sliding down towards my face. And then Fortunately, I was on my feet, and at that point, all there was was, like, flat run to ski out of, so I felt pretty did. comfortable. I felt comfortable enough, though, to, like, all right, this is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Like, work it a little bit. You got cheeky. Dude, oh, I know. For the shot? For the oh, second, for the second like part that. of the... I don't know if I like that. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was definitely gnarly and a little sus, but definitely learned some lessons and. <laughs> approaching the back country is always like no oh, oh cool i got this all right watch this guys oh yeah. jesus it was gnarly <laughs> you've been listening to the low pressure podcast the podcast for skiers this has been a red mark media production